welcome in my guests. This is another CE National uh, Digital Lab. My name is Eric Miller. I am the Director of Ministry Operations, uh, and we are offering these digital labs um, through CE National. We've been doing them on Zoom and streaming them live to Facebook, uh, but you can also find all of our digital labs at buildmomentum.org slash digital labs. Uh, we've got about 30 of these on all kinds of different topics because we want to help equip parents, youth leaders, pastors, churches to live on mission for Jesus. And so uh, tonight's Digital Lab, we're doing it a little bit of a different time. We're doing it at 8 p.m. on the East Coast, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, I guess, or if you live out in uh, Colorado where Joanna lives. So thank you for joining us. We're talking about homeschooling in 2020. Now, I understand homeschooling may sometimes have negative stereotypes. Uh, if you are one of those parents that you've teased about homeschooling, haha, jokes on you because now you're <laughs> you're probably homeschooling your kids and you're watching this video. So welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us, that you've tuned in and pressed play. Um, so I have with me uh, three ladies, Natalie Kohler, Joanna Zook, and Heather Gross. They are all joining us because they are experts. They are. They will not say. I, they will not say that they're experts. I'm seeing all of them shaking their heads. But I'm saying they're experts because they have years of experience of homeschooling their children. Uh, and so, if you are like me, where you uh, have found yourself in a situation where you're now trying to to manage your schedule of work and you're working from home, and oh by the way, you have kids at home who also need to do e-learning and get on their Zoom calls and all the things, this is a conversation for you. So um, tonight I wanna introduce, we'll start with jo Joanna. Joanna is, uh, her and her husband Nate, they currently live in Colorado, like I mentioned, they have three children, uh, ages two is the youngest, so uh, to nine, and they are, they have homeschooled for four years, and I'll let the lady say uh, a little bit more about that here in just a second. We also have Heather Gross. Heather is joining us from Cincinnati, Ohio. They have four kids, uh, ages the youngest is seven through 15, and they've homeschooled for now 11 years. I think I got that right, yeah? Um, and then Natalie is from Worcester, Ohio, and they have three kids, uh, ages nine to six, and she's been homeschooling for about seven years. So those of you parents who you're like, I've been doing homeschooling, if we would even call it that, uh, for like six months, then welcome. We're glad that you're a part of this conversation. Our goal today really is to be a resource. We do not charge for these uh, digital labs. We want to be a resource, like I said. Uh, but tonight our topic is to encourage and equip parents uh, who now find themselves homeschooling their children in the midst of COVID-19, or maybe you're thinking about homeschooling and you've kind of always wondered, is that a, a good option for us as a family? And maybe uh, COVID is forcing your hand and giving you a little taste of that. So uh, ladies, why don't you just kind of briefly share your background, your experience as a homeschool parent and teacher, um, and, and kind of even, you know, walk us through how did you get started? What, what was that like? Anybody want to go first? <laughs> I will. Yeah. My name is Natalie Kohler. And um, so I, pre-children, um, was a teacher. I taught middle school math and loved it. Um, when my kids came along, I thought that I would go back into the schools as they started going to school. Um, but as that time came around um i thought you know i'm gonna keep our oldest son um i'm gonna keep him home and do kindergarten with him at home um maybe we'll do start in first grade um but i feel like the lord just kept saying like you can do this and um so i think we did it just because we wanted to do life with him we wanted to we wanted to teach him and um learn with him and so that's how we started. I also was um, a teacher, but I taught upper elementary, so like fifth and sixth grade uh, before we had kids. But I know that I said numerous times I would never homeschool. <laughs> the Lord has a funny way of being like, huh, never. <laughs> but um, I, when we were first married, we were at a church that had actually several families that were homeschooling and we were helping lead the youth group. And I was like, some of these kids are really sharp. 
and they were homeschooled. And I was like, huh. And they weren't super weird. <laughs> and I actually said to one of the moms, like, hey, I used to think all homeschool kids were weird. And she said, and I thought this was like a profound truth, that kids are only as weird as their parents. <laughs> so my kids are doomed. But <laughs> but it was really like you start looking at like, and she said also, we all had weird kids in our classes in school too. And I was like, oh, that's true too. <laughs> so, but if you start looking, you know, like the kids that are a little, little goofy, like, oh, that's probably a trait they picked up from some parent. But anyway, so that was when we first started considering it. And then um, our oldest is an August birthday. And so he was just going to be turning five. And it was like, but he taught himself to read when he was three. And so it was like, wait, he's super smart, very motivated to learn. But the local school like really didn't want me to send him at just turning five. And so we started praying about it. We had already been thinking about it. But that was like the final like, you know what, like, why put him off for a year? Like, let's just start and see what happens. And so we started then and um, we, you know, I kind of always assumed we'd only go through elementary school since I taught fifth and sixth grade. And then I was around more and more families that were doing it well through the upper grades in high school. And then I was like, you know what, let's just keep going and see how this goes. So here we are. He's a sophomore. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really jealous of you ladies because I was homeschooled and was never going to homeschool my children. So I didn't major in education at all. Should have. That would have been a much more useful than counseling and communication. So if they have any questions about radio shows, I'm, I'm good to go on that. <laughs> um, but I was homeschooled from early elementary, basically until high school. Our parents put us in public school for a couple years and then took us back out again and then put us back in. So I, did, I finished high school in public school. Um, but then when I became a parent, and yeah, five is a difficult age to send your kid off to... <laughs> Um, to be in a, in a different environment than what you have decided your home should be for that many hours of the day. And so my husband and I talked and prayed about it. And we just felt like our, our oldest child's character development wasn't quite ready to go into that environment. So we thought, oh, we'll, we'll hold off. And it's been a year by year thing. And every year we decide, yeah, I think we can do, I think we can do another year of this. We're, we're getting in a good flow or I can do a little bit better. Um, yeah, so we've homeschooled the whole time, and I have really appreciated that when we moved here, um, I wasn't sure about the homeschooling thing still. It was on the table, but not really. But there are so many homeschooling families around and co-ops around, and then so many more resources than when I was growing up that I really feel the chances of my kids being weird is diminished significantly than it was, you know, when I became weird, so. <laughs> nice. It, it's funny that there is that there does seem to be like a, a stigmatism, a stereotype towards homeschooling and, and probably ev because everybody knew like that one weird kid growing up that like they didn't know how to socialize because they truly like stayed at home and what we can go down that path. Right. But you can also, Heather, I love that you're sharing that. You can also think of like the really awkward, like public school kid too, that like had a, also weird connotations too. So Kind of to explain, just because it's going to be in, in our viewers' mind, kind of explain to us just how did you and your husbands get to the process? Maybe why did you feel like it's the best thing for you and your family? What, what was, kind of walk us through that process. Yeah, like I alluded to, for us, it was kind of seeing my oldest child's propensity to follow the most exciting person in the classroom. And that person wasn't usually following the rules. <laughs> So looking kind of at that and thinking, you know, it would be good if we had a couple more years to really guide this child in character development. Um, and then for me, it was added to when my second child sh shows a lot of um, symptoms of ADD. So the, the ability to really have like sustained attention and focus for long periods of time, I just don't want her to be the bad kid. Like I, I realized that in a classroom environment five days a week, that would be potentially hazardous to her emotional and mental development. And I'm able to tailor her education more towards her attention span and what she's able to do and how she's able to handle it. And that's been a really good thing for me to get to see her grow as I have identified her strengths and her weaknesses and been able to 
adapt curriculum accordingly with my son too, you know, his strengths and weaknesses too, figuring out, okay, he could do a lot more of this. Um, but this is something, you know, it's not, he doesn't need as much work on. Um, let's let him grow in these areas. He's really gifted in and this other stuff, like we'll just get by for now and then work on more later. So I love that piece. Sorry, that jumped kind of into how is homeschooling going for us? But yeah. those were kind of our original things. It's like we wanted to be able to connect with our kids where they were at and help their education fit them with where they were at. And that's been really fun to get to see that come to fruition. Yeah. Nice. Heather, what about you? Um, yeah, I think Pete and I, you know, like when we were helping with the youth group and we're seeing these kids that were just, they were so well-spoken and able to defend their faith, and uh, we were just super impressed with them, and so we started talking more with those parents, you know, I mean, like, so, <laughs> what are you guys doing? And, you know, hearing them share about how they were able to have, you know, when you're with them more, you can have more of the heart conversations, and you can tailor things to their strengths and weaknesses, and so we were kind of intrigued by thinking of it that way and started praying about the possibility. And at that point we didn't even have kids. So then, you know, coupled with Don's birthday and, um, and then also he, Don, when he was little did have some attention issues as well. And I thought some of the same things that Joanna was saying that I was like, oh, he's gonna, they're either going to want me to medicate him or they're going to want, like, he's going to be in trouble. And he even still, like, if he's trying to memorize something, he paces like at home. <laughs> and so he's just not, He's not one to sit for long periods of time, although as he's gotten older, it's gotten way better. But um, but it was definitely a concern at the beginning too, that like, okay, this could be really beneficial to have him home to not only mm -hmm. get to, you know, help shape his heart more than just the hours that we mm -hmm. had, but also to um, help him as he's growing through some of this attention issues, so. Yeah. Uh, Natalie? Um, I think, it probably helped. I have a sister who has homeschooled her children. And so I got to see into that their house and to see what, you know, how that worked and how homeschooling, I mean, the beauty of homeschooling versus being in um, a brick and mortar building. Um, I also substitute taught quite often um, as our kids were younger. Um, and I remember coming home with such a headache one day and thinking like I can't imagine sending my child that he has to be sitting through this class there was just a lot of behavior issues um and that thought that I ha you have to go to school and you have to sit through and I'm sorry that you know these things are happening was it was really hard for me I remember that being a, a big part of us saying can we just keep him home and, and do this school at home? Mm. So I think it, it's interesting that as I'm, I'm listening to your story, thank you for sharing kind of your experience and, and being honest with us. Like I, I'm not hearing like irrational fears. I'm not hearing like, you know, you, you had just decided this is what we're going to right? Like, <laughs> I think that's so important to highlight because every child is different. Every family dynamic matters, and, and those are things to be considered and to be prayed through and to be, you, know, you, you talk them through. I love hearing those stories because it's not just something, a, a decision that happens in a vacuum. Um, all three of you are saying like they, they were prayed over, they're considered, like you're, you're factoring your, your children's needs and how you know them. And I think uh, if we're honest, like let's take that as a transferable prin principle to all of these families who are now having their kids doing school from home, whether they're the primary teacher or their, their school district is the primary teacher and they're doing e-learning or virtual learning. The same principles apply that every kid learns differently. And so for parents to understand how do we capitalize on that? Heather, I love what you just said. Like, I now have time to invest in my children in ways that we didn't have before. And so I would love just for, for us to kind of spend the rest of our time um, in this conversation talking through what, what are some of those, the, the things, whether you want to call them tips and tricks or, or advice maybe that you would give to those parents of like, how do you capitalize on knowing the individual needs of your children 
but also leveraging how they learn or teaching them, you know, how do you set healthy kind of boundaries and, and context and environment? How do you create an environment for them to learn in? Right. So that's kind of how I want to couch the rest of our, our conversation, if that makes sense. So uh, I guess the, the first question I would ask would just be for these parents who find themselves now um, homeschooling, right. And however we were going to define that, whatever context that means for you, that's a lot of different things now. Well, what advice or encouragement would you give to those parents who they're, they're juggling a lot, they're stressed out, there's, there's all kinds of scheduling needs that are going on. Like, what encouragement do you guys have for them? I think one thing that um, I was talking to Pete, my husband, before this, and he was like, the flexibility, like he said, obviously we can't, I can't relate to working at home while I'm homeschooling because that we've been blessed that I haven't had to do that. But one of the things that we love about it is there's flexibility in, and it doesn't need to look like school at home. And so, in fact, I don't think it should because it's, it's not. And so it, being a formal classroom teacher, you had to get all the kids to, to this point and then to that point, and you had to have a bathroom break at this point, and, and you have to wait for the kid that's still writing. And you, you know, so there's a lot of things that aren't going to look the same, and that's okay. So if you're homeschooling for the first time, or if you're even virtual schooling and you, you're like, should my kid be done this quickly? Yes. <laughs> like, it's not going to take as long as it will in the classroom. It's just not. And some things might take longer than you think, but in general, like if you can get them focused, it shouldn't take as long. And so that's one thing that I think surprised me. I think my poor, I'm always apologizing to my oldest because, you know, with any of our children, your oldest, whether you're homeschooling or just learning how to parent in general, like, sorry, I'm learning how to parent with you. You're my guinea pig. But I think his first couple of years of, of homeschooling, I was like, well, we shouldn't be done yet. So let me find something else for you to do. <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> He's like, wait, she does way less work than I did. I'm like, I know, but she's doing great. <laughs> I didn't know. So yeah. anyway, I think that the flexibility and then it doesn't need to look, you know, like school. And if you are, you know, I think it's important to be consistent for your kids and let them know what the schedule will be. But I think if you are clear with them, like, look, mom's got these hours that I have to do this. So, you know, on these days, this is the time that we're going to do X, Y, and Z. I think just letting them know the expectations, um, just like you and I would want someone to let us know what they expect of us, you know, letting them know this is the time and we're going to do it. And, you know, and then giving them breaks, of course, but, but just so they know the expectations. So be flexible, but then also be consistent. That's so good. Yeah. I agree with Heather in that. Um, I think some people think well, I wasn't, you know, I didn't go to school to be a teacher, so I don't feel equipped to homeschool my kids. And what I have learned is that I've tried to have to, I've tried to throw those things off, <laughs> all those things that, um, because, you know, that we all have to sit at a desk and that we all have to make sure that there's a worksheet for everything that we're doing to show, to prove that we're doing this school at home. Um, that's how I felt for the first year or so that I homeschooled that um, someone might come to my door and want to see the work. And I stressed over that. And something I've found just life is, you know, sometimes we can do our math on the driveway and we can jump on the trampoline and review our history facts or our science facts. And um, that has just brought joy to my children. It has not felt like, school. Um, and so you can make it fun, mm -hmm. but we also have, you know, a schedule sort of, of, these are the things that need to get accomplished this week. And so if we get this much math done today, you know, and we can't do math tomorrow, it's okay. Cause we got that done this day. And so we do have our weekly goals. Um, but the kids have learned a good work ethic, I think in that too, of, you know, we're, we are accomplishing our goals, um, even though we didn't, you know, do math every single day or something like that. So giving ourselves that flexibility. Um, and also, I think you get to see your, the learning styles of your kids. Um, my son is extroverted, like me. We think out loud and 
So I always, I know what's going on in his head because it's coming out. Um, our nine-year-old daughter is an introvert. Um, she's an internal processor, at least. And so there's times where I'm like, are you, are you thinking or are you daydreaming? <laughs> um, so, but the, you know, she'll be quiet for five minutes just staring at something. But when I can pull her out, she'll say these beautiful things that she's thinking about. And um, that has been such a huge thing for our family because that's her daddy. And that mm-hmm. helps me to see how he's thinking. You know, I'm like, oh, you know. And, um, but it, I think that has brought our family closer together mm-hmm. is I wouldn't see that if she was going to school every day. Um, and so it has been some sh- something that we've also learned to respect the different learning styles in each other too. So. I appreciate the feedback from both of you ladies. It's validation because I think every homeschool mom feels like, am I doing it right? Am I doing good enough? Is this, is this okay that I'm breaking this rule? Like we did language arts in the car, not in the, in the driveway, (laughs) in the car. I was like, okay, you read that aloud and you answer that aloud. And I'm, I can't look at it because I'm driving. So, you know, here's do your best. Um, And I, I love that we have that flexibility as homeschooling moms. Um, or families. And I, I think even, you know, kids that are doing synchronous learning right now, there's a lot of flexibility in that as well, even though they may be tied to the electronic device. I know a family that took it on, they, they went to the mountains with it. You know, as long as you have Wi-Fi, you can travel. So there's still opportunities to get good family memories and experiences, mm-hmm. even in the midst of all of this, this chaos that's going on. And I think look for those like that's for me what keeps homeschooling fresh and fun is looking for those fun little moments those fun opportunities that we get to do because we're homeschoolers like this is a it's a privilege and it's there's lots of little pockets where we get to be creative and um learn new things about them like I took my kids on a walk around the neighborhood and had them map out our neighborhood. And the thing that I learned about that is I am horrible at spatial understanding. And my son is really good. Like he was crying when he was trying to read my map because it was so off from his. Um, But that was really fun for me to get to to learn that part about how his brain works and for him to get to learn that it's okay if mommy thinks differently than you. Um, I guess the one thing I want to validate for parents who are doing this for the first time is there is a lot of stress and tension between the parent and the child, like trying to figure out when am I parenting you and when am I teaching you? Mm Because a lot of times those are different, but a lot of times they're the same. So for me, I, I got into a lot of power struggles with my kids early on because I'm like, you finish the worksheet, you know, like mm-hmm. we're going to be task finishers in this family when really I, I was expanding it beyond their capabilities of their attention spans. Mm-hmm. So figuring out how to not, not create mm, battles, but also just validating the battles are going to happen and it's okay. And, um, there's so much grace and there's so much love and it's okay to apologize when you mess up on one of those areas. On kind of on that note, I think um, it, before we started, Eric mentioned this too, that there are going to be times when your kids are driving you crazy and you need to get away. You need to step away from them. <laughs> and it's hard. I love my kids and I love homeschooling, but there are times where I'm like, I have been with, I'm an extrovert, but I'm like, I've been with people, people that need me all day. And so um, when our youngest was about a year old, um, I remember thinking like, oh my goodness, she's going to give up her morning nap soon. And how am I going to keep doing this? Like, how is it like actually going to work? And um, a a sweet lady from my church was like, you should get a mother's helper. And I was like, those still exist. And are, are, do I look like I'm made of money? Like, how how is this going to work? And she was like, no, no, you find like some 14 or 15 year old or 13 year old homeschool girl that you pay less than a babysitter because you're there and she just plays with your little kids. And that way you don't feel guilty about sending them like, you know, there's someone playing with them while you're, and I was like, huh. But we actually ended up doing that for about a year and a half. And I was um, 
teaching and tutoring at our homeschool co-op and the, it ended up the Lord worked it out so that what I made there paid her and you know God just provided and she came two mornings a week just for like two hours those two mornings and would take my little two outside if it was nice or play with them do crafts with them and then um, I also ended up having her come on Friday afternoons and watching all the kids so I could run errands without anybody and it was like oh. <laughs> So anyway, that was, I mean, just to be real that there, I homeschooled, but I'm not a saint. Like I, you know, I also just needed a break sometimes. And that, you know, we had looked at possibly putting our kids into a Christian school nearby and prayed about it and didn't feel like that's what we were supposed to do. But we also at that point were like, well, maybe we could somehow find other ways so that I don't lose my mind. <laughs> so, so that was kind of what we came up with. But Anyway, all that just to say that like finding whether for one year my mom came in the afternoons um, on Friday afternoons to watch the kids when money was a little tighter. So finding things like that, maybe trade with another friend so that you can have just a little break every now and then because I do think that's important. And to piggyback on that, we've never given up nap time. Like my kids don't nap anymore. Well, my two-year-old still does, but it, we, we just transitioned it. We call it now quiet time. <laughs> And everybody has to go to their room and everybody has their quiet space. And it's so important for my introvert to be able to regroup. It's important for my extrovert to learn that she's okay by herself. And it's important for me to be able to know, like, I'm going to get this hour, hour and a half of alone time to myself. Because, yeah, I, I, my, my social muscles don't go all day. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be interacting constantly with people who need you to guide them. It's exhausting. That's so good because I, I think what you, you're, I want to highlight some of what I'm hearing you guys say and correct me if I'm wrong, but, but be flexible and yet scheduled. And, yeah. and those can sound like two different things, right? But, I, but I think there's something beautiful about what you, what you all are saying because there's, there's a specific rhythm and routine to it that if you can figure that out, it's helpful. So, so mm -hmm. let's dive a little bit deeper on that if you're willing. Kind of walk us through what, what does that look like? Because I think some of these parents, right, who I have tons of these friends, they're, both parents are working full time or, they're, or one's part time and they're both working from home and now their kids have this set schedule of, you know, this class is at this time and we're on Zoom and this class I have homework for and I need to get this test. Like there's a schedule to it, and yet how do you be flexible in in a, a season where there's so many demands on you? How, give, give some advice maybe on how you guys have found ways to be creative and, and doing things. Natalie, you said like doing our school in the driveway or while jumping on the trampoline. That's perfect. Like what, what are some other things maybe that would that would encourage parents to have a set routine and a rhythm and a schedule and yet giving themselves permission to be flexible? Thoughts on that? I'm trying, I mean, I know that if you are working and there's a set time that your student needs to be on the computer, um, I know from experience, just my neighbor um, herself, was, that has been her life at, with um, COVID. And so it is hard. <laughs> and I wanna encourage you guys, you know, to to think through as a family what you need to do um, if it's between you and your spouse, you know, who can can work for a while, you know, sitting next to that child to make sure that they're doing what they're needing to do. Um, but also finding those breaks in, um, you know, between meetings or between classes to get outside to to run around the cul-de-sac or ride that bike around the block really quick and come back. Um, I think just bringing life into a house instead of just sitting at a desk. Yeah. We all need that. <laughs> and so um, just trying to think, you know, we're going to be, we're, we've got to get this work done, but we're also going to take these mini breaks even in our day to do something that's fun. If you can't be at school or have a normal schedule like you, you're used to. Yeah. Well, I, I love that thought too, because it's kind of like give yourself permission to not get tied to your device and tied to your schedule and taught like, honestly, there are, there are tons of people right now who are struggling with depression, anxiety, like you name it. And, and the list can go on and on and on. And, and 
And I want us to be real and authentic and, and own that, that there are families who are struggling with that. And, and yet part of what is going to get us out of that is a break in the routine, right? It's giving us, giving ourselves permission to, this doesn't have to dictate our whole world, our whole life, right? And so figuring out, sure, what are the things that are important and, and how do we be structured and scheduled? And yet at the same time, maybe you need to take a, a long weekend and step back from all of that and evaluate what's really important here. And is doing this for the next six months or through the end of the year or however long it's going to be, is that really going to benefit us in the long run? And sometimes, and I'm sure all of you would agree with this, you, you have to remind yourself you're the parent. And so the school system, they're, they're not going to dictate what's best for your kids. Your neighbors and their routine aren't going to dictate what, right? So r- remind yourself you're the parent. You get to decide. And I love you're all saying same, same things of like, go for a walk, get outside, do something different, be, be creative, right? Um, so I, I would just speak into those parents who are wrestling with this, like, you know, say time out. Okay. This is enough. Let's put all the devices away for a day. It's Sunday. Like I just, I, I had a conversation with some friends of mine recently and they said, we made Sundays a no device day. We just put the computer away. We put our phones away. We watched movies together. we read books. We went for a walk. I'm like, that's refreshing. Can I just do that every day? <laughs> so I, I love that. I think yeah. to speak into that too, I just want to validate like the stress level that parents are experiencing right now and just let them know like there's no homeschooling mom out there who feels like I've got it all together and I did everything perfectly this year and my kids are completely ready to move into next year. I haven't met one single mom who feels like she's checked all the boxes at the end of every day. And yet, you know what? Our kids still self thrive. Um, we had one year where I was pregnant most of the year and then um, had a newborn the rest of the year. And that was not a, you know, record breaking year for anybody, but my kids did fine. Kids are incredibly resilient. And when they're developmentally ready to grasp the concept, they grasp it incredibly quickly. So if this is a year where things don't go perfectly, where kids seem like they're struggling, where you feel like there's going to be a hole or a gap, like next year, or later on in the year, they're probably going to catch it really, really quickly. Um, my, I've had a delayed, a delayed reader, and I've had a delayed adder and subtractor, whatever you call somebody who's delayed in math. And I've, I've seen their brains catch up to that really quickly as I've tried new, different curriculums and different strategies, but also just they aged into it okay. So, so what you're saying, like, yes, schedule and, and do the best you can, but also give yourself a lot of grace. Because like you're saying, Eric, you need to make space for freedom and for life-giving things like Natalie was saying too. And if, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Heather. I was just going to say to your point about like that you're the parent and you can make the choices. If the virtual schooling is killing your relationship with your kid or is making the, the time frame is not working with you working from home or whatever it might be, like know that honestly you can buy a math curriculum and a reading curriculum and do it at home on your own. And honestly, if it's one year, if it's, you know, whatever it might be, like Joanna said, like we all have, people always worry about, oh, they're going to have this gap in their education. We all have gaps in our education. We all had a year that a parent or a, a teacher had a maternity leave and you had a sub that didn't know what she was doing. Or my chemistry teacher was hired to teach Spanish and then the chemistry teacher left. And she, so the Spanish teacher taught chemistry it was maddening. So like, you know, like she didn't know what she was doing, but so I'm like, there's all, we all have these gaps and we, if we know, if we learn how to learn, then it's fine. We figure out how to learn what we need to learn. So even though you might not be an education major and you might not, you know, like Natalie mentioned earlier, sometimes that gets in my way. So um, just take heart in that, like, if it's making your life crazy to do what you're doing, you can say, you know what, we're going to, pull the plug on this and do something different. And it, it might be so much better. I mean, I know a lot of people that started homeschooling by doing um, the OHVA or, you know, the virtual academy <laughs> um, and because it helped give you some training wheels to start. 
And then we're like, you know what, that's pretty rigid. I actually don't like them telling me what to do for everything. And so, um, you know, just reach, reach out to one of us or reach out to someone you know that's homeschooling. And I had neighbors over all summer that were like, so where do you get your curriculum? And what do you, and you know, and I was like, hey, I have this actually from my daughter that's already done that you want it. <laughs> and so, you know, just having conversations and figuring out it's not actually as hard as you might think it is. You can do it. Yeah, that's awesome. So kind of kind of walk us through then, like, how do you guys structure your day? What are some things that, like, that, that parents who are working from home even could think through and factor into their, their schedules? Like, you know, school, I know when you send them off to school, they're there for a set period of time. But what are maybe some creative things that parents could do um, that, would, that would offset that or that they could factor into um, how to get creative with your schedule and your, your routine? What does that look like even for you guys? I can start. Um, something that learning to balance three kids and doing school with all three of them. Um, so for me, I do, I teach online um, in the mornings virtually. Um, I teach kiddos in China. And so I'm finished with teaching there at 9 a.m. And so for my kids to know, we start school at 10 because otherwise I feel stressed. <laughs> trying to jump from one thing to the next. And so my kids are able to, you know, they know they have to have breakfast and brush their teeth. That is something you can forget to do when you homeschool. <laughs> um, by that time. But, but at 10 o'clock, I need everyone to be ready to do school with me. And um, I try to start with my oldest to do, well, we start, we do Bible together at 10 a.m. And then I might let my girls go do something else while I start math with our oldest. And then I let him work independently on his math while I teach our middle child. And then I let her work independently while I teach our youngest. So everybody's kind of busy doing school. Um, but I can't teach all three of them at the same time for at least for their math curriculum. We do try to do our history together as a family um, and our science. Um, and then I sit with each one of them separately in the afternoon and they're allowed to have a special drink. So it might be tea or um, I have my coffee and we sit on the couch while they read to me in the afternoon and they each have that one on one time with me. Um, but I think that's something we all look forward to um, for that time. Something else that I've thought of while we're talking is what do you do when your homeschool child doesn't want to work for you? <laughs> Cause you can't send them <laughs> <to> <laughs> the principal and you can't call mom because you are mom. Um, and so I feel, you know, each family is different. We have created, um, and maybe that's coming from my classroom setting, but where we just have a chart. And so if I have to ask more than once for them to do something and I get attitude, you know, we do do a check system um, and they earn their screen time at the end of school. And so, you know, one check is a, like, hey, I'm noticing this in you. Two checks is you better watch out. And three checks is no screen time for the rest of the day. And for my kids, that means a lot. <laughs> so usually, you know, it only takes one check. I have a child who can make it usually to her second check before. <laughs> uh, before I see a change in behavior. But um, I think having something like that, whatever you know your child will answer to, what they're trying to get for that, you know, for that afternoon. Um, but I know that can be a problem with homeschooling that can make you want to run away at the end of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I love hearing what you do, Natalie. And I like hearing about the reading in the afternoon with coffee. That would be, yeah, something to look forward to for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's fun to, it's fun to brainstorm and hear how people do different things. So for me, I do the most difficult subjects earliest in the day when their brains and I am still fresh with someone I have the most patience. Um, but for both of my, both of my kids that are in school, um, I, I borrowed Sarah McKenzie. She does read aloud revival is a podcast or something resource. 
and she talked about notebooks. So every day, you do this, Heather? Mm -hmm. Every day um, I go and I look back at all the work they did yesterday and I grade it. This is in the morning for me works best. I could have done it the night before, but I didn't. Um, in the morning I do that and then I write out their checklist for that day. And they're kind of independent to do it when they can do it. And if it takes them all day, it takes them all day. The things that I'm involved in, it didn't end up working for me, I think, with a two-year-old to, like, have this rigid schedule. This happens at this time for you and this time for you and this time for you. Like, I've tried it, and I always get super stressed out because you didn't read fast enough. And now your math is taking too long. We're all off schedule. It's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> so when they have their checklist and I can just pop in and say, okay, I'm going to need this time with you now. Put this on pause, but we're going to get this off your checklist. And then you can go back to working on things. Um, that seems to work really well for the dynamics of our family. And it works really well for, for me and my peace of mind because it gives us the right amount of autonomy for them, like learning their own work ethic. And then also like taking the stress off of me to make sure it all happens exactly. And we have a built in break at 1030 for some of our family read alouds together and some of our riches that we do. Uh, we call it tea time. And we, we don't have fancy drinks. We call it tea time, but nobody likes tea. So it's just a snack time, really. <laughs> That's funny. I do the notebook thing, but I do it a little bit differently because I don't want to have to write in every day. So I usually sit down Friday or Saturday and write out the next week on one page. And it's like a checklist that they, you know, some days I'll put an X. You don't have to do that one today, you know, but, um, but I do that for my younger two. We, um, we joined Classical Conversations, which is a homeschool group when my youngest was five. And um, so my older two are in what's called challenge, which is the middle school and high school classes. And they actually go for a full day and get their assignments for the next week. So I don't actually, I can tailor that. I, they don't grade the work there. So it's up to me to grade it. But um, so I can say this week, we're not doing that. And, but in general, their assignments are kind of already done for them. Um, but I, it's funny that you said that about the schedule not working out and then stressing you out because one year, I think it was two years ago, I had like color coded chart that I had thought of about and prayed over all summer. Like, I'm going to do this with this kid here and then this with this kid here. And while they're doing that, this kid's going to read to this kid and all this stuff. And like the second week, the older two boys had this brilliant idea that they were going to get up early and start early so they could be done early. And I was like, wait, what? I had this whole chart and uh, and then they like wanted me to still help them when they wanted me to help them and I'm like well no because I'm helping ah, so yeah it was maddening but so then I've just kind of figured out and it's funny actually Natalie I kind of do the reverse of what you do I start with my littlest or my most attention deprived child which is actually my nine-year-old I usually do him first because his attention span is the shortest and so I sit with him and do all the things that we need to do together and then send him to be independent. And then I do all the stuff that my seven-year-old needs to do with me. And then, and she does a lot before while, while Will's with me. And then um, the older two pretty much know that I'm not gonna help them till I'm done with the younger two. Cause they're old enough at 13 and 15 that a lot of their work is independent. I do Latin with both of them. And that is where Joanna, you were talking about your mind being sharp, doing that in the afternoon after having done school with the two other kids already. <laughs> I'm like, this wasn't the best plan, but. <laughs> That's the answer key, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, and the other thing I would say, you mentioned Sarah McKenzie, and um, she has I actually brought up to Teaching from Rust, um, A Homeschooler's Guide to Unshakable Peace, and The Reader Lab Family, which has a bunch of really good book recommendations. Mm -hmm. And um, I've met her, and she is like as amazing in person, and she just loves helping homeschool moms. So check out her podcast if uh, you're looking for encouragement. But she. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, where was I going? Uh, shoot, sorry. I'm trying to think what I was even, oh, morning time. So in, in Teaching from Rush, she talks about morning time. And this is probably kind of what you do during your tea time, Joanna. But we start our morning, um, not till nine, because I'm not a morning person. But we usually at 8.30, 8.40 do Bible time with my husband. But then at nine, we'll do morning time, which we, she talks about like, this is where you get to do the things with your kids all together that are important to you. And so I like art. So we learn about artists and art. We read some poetry together. We memorize silly poems. Um, we always sing the doxology because I love just that idea of starting the day praising God. And um, 
might pray for our neighbors or our family. And then we usually read a chapter book together. Sometimes now my older two leave to go get their work done if they have a lot, or if we're rereading a book that they might've read when they were younger. Um, but it is a great time of just like together, being together. And it's fun because then when we're out and about and you know, you see something that reminds you of a silly poem that we memorized about a worm, you know, they all start saying it. And so it's fun to just have that family like connection and bonding time. And that's one of my favorite parts. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's so important what you guys are saying of like, um, the importance, like, I know I found like, even just for me, some of the tasks that I might do for my own job, like, uh, it may take me an hour in the morning to read and reply to all of my email. And yet, if I do it in the afternoon, when I'm personally a little more fresh, I tend to, it takes me a longer time to wake up, right? So I'm the night owl. I found that if you know, it takes me an hour in the morning, it might take me 45 minutes in the afternoon, but being a night owl, if I can wait until the end of the day, it might take me 20 minutes and I do it with the same efficiency or, or even better. And so figuring out what are those things for you as, as a parent, but also for your kids and helping set them up to succeed by how you schedule your time together with how you manage, you know, all the tasks that you need to get done. So that, that's awesome. Um, one last question for you guys, just kind of, as, as we've talked about, we, we know that there are parents who, who are overwhelmed. They're, they're struggling with this new rhythm and schedule. Um, you guys have, have kind of spoken into some of that, but l let's just take one step further in that. What, what in advice or encouragement and some of this, we, we had even talked before we started recording our video here. Um, what would, what would advice or encouragement be? that you would give to those parents who they're on the brink of it. They're, they're ready to throw in the towel. They're ready to give up. Um, they're, they're looking for some hope. What, what encouragement would you have for them? Your relationship with your kids is vital and whatever else happens in their life, like you giving them a firm foundation in the word of God with a supportive and loving environment and an enriching environment. Um, that is going to carry so much farther than whatever their online lesson was supposed to be for that day. So if you have to scrap plans or if you have to let them give like minimal work so that your relationship can be strong, um, I say prioritize that this year in this period of stress. I mean, over the long haul, you got to figure out the balance for that. But this is a period of stress and think of yourself as in crisis and what's the minimum you need to do to get through the crisis while preserving your relationship and the at-home environment because children absorb so much from their environment and um, you can cover a lot of wrongs with that and you can also create a lot of wrongs if, if you're too stressed out about things. Wow, I, I love that. I, I think that, that, I just wanna put an exclamation mark on that, Joanne, because um, we're, we're living in a time where, where we have to prioritize people over tasks and so if that means, you know, putting our computers aside with our kids, um, you know, to, to make sure that they know that they matter um, or even giving them an opportunity to put something off, like you're saying, that, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. What else? What other thoughts do you guys have? Well, one thing I know, I was just talking to a neighbor that is homeschooling this year for the first time. She's not doing the virtual learning. She's actually homeschooling like with books herself and she was saying she was feeling discouraged and then she realized that she's doing a full-time job um, on top of she also has a two-year-old and and so she said that really encouraged her to know like okay I'm I'm supposed to feel a little tired like I'm like I'm doing a lot and so um, that gave her a little bit more permission to be like whew, this is a lot you know so and I think especially when you start you do feel a lot of expectations and burdens and and so um and i guess on that note don't neglect your time in the word yourself and in praying you know with your husband and for your children because it is easy to start trying to do it in your own strength and that's not going to that's not going to get you anywhere so so mm -hmm. remember to cast those cares on him true yeah girls i mean i feel like you know all you remember what we have gone through and mm -hmm. so learning that, you know, as soon as my feet hit the floor, like I know that I need God's word. Um, otherwise I, I get anxious about 
am I doing enough? Am I enough for my family? Um, and so putting your eyes on God's word, hearing God's word in the morning, um, and praying for your day. Um, I also know that that first year I was in tears one day. And I mean, at that point I had a kindergartner <laughs> and, um, that was it. That was, I was teaching one kid. Um, but my husband called a friend and said, can you watch our kids? I need to take Natalie to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And he brought, I mean, this pad of paper and just said, just tell me what, you know, what are you afraid of? What's stressing you mm -hmm. out? He just wrote everything and helped me to look at our other options and then to pray with me over everything to know, you know, we're doing what God is calling us to do, even though it's, it might be hard and then help me, you know, kind of create a schedule of what I think would work for us and our kids. And, you know, your partner, your spouse knows your kids as well as you do. And so to just talking and, and letting your kids be a part of that with you, um, I think that something to remember too, you know, if it be COVID, we're walking through this. That is a huge thing that we're teaching our kids. How do we walk through something that we've never experienced before? And, you know, the fears that come with that, those conversations with our kids, the conversations our kids are hearing us have with our spouse, um, all of those are educational. Mm -hmm. Our kids are learning how to react. They're learning how to trust God. Um, by watching us and we can be real with them. I think Joanna shared, you know, learning to, to apologize to our kids. Um, mm -hmm. That is something that, you know, for sure, if you're home alone <laughs> with your kids all day, please say sorry to them sometimes <laughs> because we need to say that. I, I know that we can act in our own sinfulness and in our own selfishness sometimes. I know I do. And my kids need to hear me say, that was wrong, and I'm sorry, and will you all forgive me? And I think those are the things, you know, I asked my 11-year-old tonight, today, before meeting with you all, you know, what does he love about homeschooling? And he just said that he feels closer with our family, and that he feels he has more free time, but he also feels that he's learning as much, if not more, than some of his friends um, at church and at school. And I just think for one, him being an 11 year old boy with two little sisters, those are his best friends. And mm -hmm. it's because he's home learning with them every day. Yeah. He, those are his playmates, you know, until everybody else can play outside. And, but those are the things that mean so much to me. And I want them to grow up with that. Mm -hmm. But those aren't all picture perfect days. We're close because we say sorry to each other. Right. So I just encourage you to be real with your family, talk things out with them, you know, have family meetings of what's working for us, what's not working for us, what do we need more of? And um, yeah, be open to having those conversations. Yeah, I love that. I think it's important to keep in mind, like whether your kids are in school or not, they're you're the primary person that they're going to learn from because they watch you, regardless their age, regardless of you know the the stage and season of life that they're in, and and that can sometimes be such a heavy burden that we carry. Um, I, I've heard my wife say, "Mom guilt is a real thing," and it's uh, it can be so hard. And so I think there are times, you know, dads maybe can. Uh, put that aside. But it, if we're honest, it's still there, um, you know, because we want to provide for our families and we want to be good examples. And so uh, I think it's so important to keep that in, in mind that like, you know, we want as parents, our kids to learn from us the ways of life and how to learn and how to be kind and how to treat other people with respect and all of that, that, that probably isn't getting taught in a class, right? Those are life skills that biblical character that we would want to infuse and invest in them. Um, and so I, I thank you for, for all speaking into that tonight in beautiful ways. So um, I know we're, we're running out of time here. We want to try and keep this to an hour. So uh, I, I just, I appreciate, I, I want to thank you all again for being a part of this conversation. Um, parents, if, if you're watching from home and uh, you found this video to be helpful, or if maybe there's somebody that keeps kind of coming to your mind while you're watching this, um, would you just share this video with them? And, and hopefully it would be an encouragement to them as it's been to you. Um, 
So thank you so much, ladies, for, for joining us. Uh, can I just get one of you to volunteer and pray for our parents who are, who are kind of in the midst of this and, and who are wrestling with how to figure out what a new normal <laughs> looks like for schooling and their families? Any one of you want to pray for our viewers? I will. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah. Heavenly Father, um, nothing passes by you um, that you didn't know was going to be. And Lord, Lord, you are all knowing. And so I pray right now um, for each family who is, is watching this, for each family who is um, questioning their schooling for their children. Um, we ask that you would just speak to them, Lord, that you would give them a peace that surpasses their understanding, Lord, that you would give them a joy, um, Lord, you are life-giving. Um, you give us just a joy that we can um, not even explain. And so I pray for that for each family who, um, if they are working, Lord, that, that you would um, help them to communicate and to come up with a schedule that works for them and their children. And Lord, if um, I pray for confidence, I pray that you would give them each the confidence that they need as parents, Lord, you have placed them in charge of these children. And so we ask that you give them the confidence that they need um, to teach them and to make these decisions. And we pray for a peace, Lord, just um, for everybody um, as we walk out of this meeting um, and this time that, um, that we would trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all again so much for joining. Thank you to uh, our guests, Natalie and Heather and Joanna. Appreciate you spending your time with us and uh, being a resource to uh, all of our viewing audience. So thank you all so much.